Hi, it's Dolly Curtis, and it's with great pleasure that I'm here tonight with a big, lively discussion about the White Bond Theater in Norwalk. And co-hosting with me tonight, fortunately for me, is Mark Graham. I'm happy to be here, Dolly. And Mark, you know, many people know of him as a director, and he's a producer, and he does it all really well. And also with me is Peter Ling, who's sort of backing up Mark, and Peter is a set designer extraordinaire. And a person that has a wonderful gift for Gab. So between the three of us, you're going to hear a lot. We have a limited time, so we want to tell you what's going on. So I'm going to introduce Mark Graham first because he is really one of the people that is spearheading the awareness of the fact that the White Barn Famous Theater in Norwalk is in much uh, trouble right now. So I'm going to turn it to Mark, and Mark, give us some background. Yeah, we're, we're very concerned. The White Barn Theater is really a historic theater in uh, Norwalk, on the Norwalk-Westport line. Lucia Lortel, uh, it was on Lucia Lortel's property. Um, it was the home of many plays for over 50 years. Uh, plays by uh, Eugene O'Neill uh, were presented, but mostly new plays, plays by Terry. Terence McNally uh, and Antho Fugard and Tennessee Williams, uh, and it was a, uh, a, a fertilizing ground for new playwrights and artists uh, in the for 50 years. Uh, at this moment, the property uh, has been sold, and a developer is about to uh, tear it down. There is a stay that's out there and through the town of Norwalk to uh, for stall the uh, destruction of the theater, but after uh, March 22nd, the theater may be just bulldozed. And to me, I was a general manager, and I worked at the White Barn when I first got out of graduate school and worked closely with Lucille and the development of plays. It was very important to me, but also to the community, and I think I want to make sure the community is aware of what's happening here. We have some important dates that are coming up and we, uh, if we can get people uh, energized and, and go to town hall and write their congressmen, I think we may be able to save uh, this theater. But is there anything that gives you that feeling that there's an opportunity there? That yeah, yeah, there is. There is. There, we have recent articles that uh, were in the New York Times and also on Broadway World that have brought this all to the attention of many uh, people who appeared at the theater, over, including um, Kevin Spacey and Tova Felcha. Yes. And, very, and they have all uh, written letters of support. And um, we are happy to have here, and we'll be talking to shortly, um, uh, Waldo Mayo, who is Lucille's great grandnephew, and um, he is spearheading the effort to save the theater uh, and uh, is raising the funds that are required to um, buy the property back from the developer. Mark, didn't you say there's a date coming up very soon? Yeah, the date, uh, I guess there is a stay and uh, f from the town of Norwalk that they cannot bulldoze or destroy the theater, but that's only to the 22nd of March. On March Second, uh, there is a town hall meeting, a public meeting, um, that we would like as many people as possible to show up uh, in Norwalk to, to express their concern. Um, and, um, and where is it? Cause that, that will be at Norwalk Town Hall. Um, what we are going to be doing, I think I, when we talk to Waldo, he may have more specifics. I don't have that in front of me exactly. Okay. But uh, it is March uh, 2nd. He'll have the date and the time and the persons that you should contact. All right. Well, Peter, are we doing all right here, over here so far? I think that that information is terribly important. Um, this is uh, a jewel in Connecticut's crown. It's a jewel in New York's crown. Uh, it's a diamond that is about to be smashed and will never be reformed. Uh, we have to save it. Um, I'm from England, and I was delighted to come across the White Barn almost accidentally when I helped a friend find it who'd acted there when she was uh, 21 years old. And uh, I took her to the Westport Playhouse thinking this is where she must have performed. And as we went in, she said to me, darling, this is not it. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I was very embarrassed because I'd made an arrangement for her to visit the Westport uh, playhouse. The company manager, who was a very nice man, said, well, it must have been the White Barn. And I had no idea about the White Barn, but we went to look for it, couldn't find it. Eventually, 
she said to me, darling, don't worry, you've been so kind to try and find it for me. Uh, and I went into a store and I said, have you heard of a place called the White Barn? And she said, oh, it's just up the road. And we went up the road and it was owned then by a school, a Quaker school uh, out of Wilton in Connecticut, the Friends School. And they were trying to turn uh, the, the, the theatre and the buildings into a new school for them. It didn't work out. Um, but anyway, I took Penny up the drive and there it was. She saw in front of her through the trees the theatre where she'd performed in when she was 21. She's now in her 80s. And she said to me, darling, this is it. Mm -hmm. And she burst into tears. Mm -hmm. And it was a very emotional moment. And ever since then, I've been trying to save the White Barn. Peter has been one of the big advocates for the theater. He has had photographs taken of the interior and exterior. These are extraordinary photographs that had not been documented before. Really? And uh, these have been very valuable as we have been going to the press uh, with our stories to show the interior of the theater, which is very special. It's a 148-seat theater. Uh, you've been there, Dolly. I used to go and tend those yes. Saturday nights. Is With it... The... Um... What was I going to say? More than one building? Yes. and But in the theater itself, there are barn doors in the back that open up onto trees. It is like uh, right out of the movie, Mickey and Judy movies. And even uh, I think Danny Kay was there at one time. And Danny, Danny Kay played ping pong with his friend Lucille Lortel in the white barn. And as they were playing, Danny turned to Lucille and said, Darling, this would make a wonderful theatre. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the White Barn. Right, right. Now, all the money or whatever Lucille had made arrangements, most of it went to New York City because that right. theatre goes... Right. There is a founda Lucille Lortel Foundation, and it really has gone to the Lortel Theatre under the foundation's guidance and does fund many of the awards in New York City. Besides the Lortel Award, um, it goes to many of the theatre companies in New York. But a decision was made to kind of... Um, terminate the relationship with the White Barn. And I think now that uh, Waldo, who is a family member, has come back and is really trying to make an effort to save this very historic and important place. Before we introduce Waldo, my, mm -hmm. one of the, my enigmas in my mind mm -hmm. is when I remember when the theater started to t at close, mm -hmm. which was about 20 years ago. Yes. The feeling was that it would continue because Lucille left the money for Vincent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Curcio to continue managing it, and I thought she deeded it that it would continue. And then everything since then has gone the opposite way. Right. Uh, I, I do know in her will she intended it to can continue, and um, it hasn't followed at least the letter, but I think Waldo may be able to explain that a little further. So do you think we should try to find Waldo right now? I think we should. He may be on the line somewhere. Uh, so, David, can we see if Waldo's with us? Hello, Waldo, are you there? Hi, how are you? Oh, Hi. So it's so nice to see your, I've seen your pictures in the um, web, uh, on the internet, from the New York Times article, and I'm so glad that there's a, you know, a relative <laughs> young actor, somebody who has flesh and blood to Lucille, who's really going to try to stop them throwing out the bar, which I hear has been the first thing that they tossed out of the building. So t could you yeah. tell us a little bit about, you know, where your efforts are and how we could help? Yeah, well, thanks, Dolly. Um, you know, I think Peter nailed it because he said we have to save this theater. And that's what we've heard in the community, in the Broadway community. People don't say, you know, we should save it or it would be nice to save it. People are saying we need to save this. This is, this is part of uh, our country's theater history. It's deep-rooted. Um, you know, people like Marilyn Monroe and Kevin Spacey and Al Pacino were guests there. Uh, Kevin Spacey did his first rehearsal of his Broadway production of Our Town and used the theater for that. Uh, so it really has a rich history of all these people. But besides that, um, you know, Lucille was a real pioneer of her day, not only being a, uh, a woman in, in her field, but she, you know, she brought African-American actors to the white barn and aligned herself with Actors' Equity when they were boycotting uh, dis discriminatory theaters and hotels. Um, when the MacArthur era was happening, uh, you know, Lucille made the white barn accessible for performers who were blacklisted from the industry. Um, and along with my grandfather and uh, herself, 
she pleaded with equity to institute staged readings of plays. And that's really what birthed the whole idea of the White Barn. Uh, you know, it was called the tryout theater uh, because staged readings wasn't approved by Actors' Equity, so they, they got that passed. Um, you know, she worked with Jacob Javits at the White Barn, who spoke to the Congress, um, advocating a bill for federal support to a national foundation to serve the performing arts. So this really encompasses um, both political uh, and and the arts in that deep-rooted history. And I think that, you know, we need to save this, and, and it's, it's just vital. It's vital to the history of, of American theater. The, and, the unfortunate you know, part to this is we have a little bit of a history here in Fairfield County where one or two other theaters that were really important, maybe not in as national way as this is, and many people tried, like with the Shakespeare Theater, we're still trying in Stratford. And I'm um, just thinking there's one other, all the theaters at Bridgeport. Right, and, and the Playhouse any... on the Green. And both right. in both cases, I've worked on them, Dolly. I've been very yeah, much Mark behind Adams. it and trying to mobilize the public. And the public has been mobilized, but politically there is just an undercurrent to really uh, not make it happen. And is it about the question about the money? Or is it about the question about maintenance? It's maintaining? always about the money. Yeah. Always yeah. about the money. We need the money. <laughs> We need the money, and we need we need to create the awareness uh, to the public because the thing is, Lucille put a museum in the White Barn. Yes, and and that's gone now, and many people don't even know about the White Barn. Uh, so we need to bring that history back, and we're just in an unfortunate, desperate situation where the barn could come down March twenty third. Uh, you know, and the developer could destroy the barn. He could also destroy the 1940s house that she used to stay in. Uh, you know, so it's, so it's important. We want people to come out to this hearing on March 2nd at 7 p.m. And that's at City Hall. The address is 125 East Avenue in Norwalk. So, uh, you know, we we welcome any support for, for people to come oh, out. Oh, so it's the Norwalk City Hall. That's a fairly new building. And it has a big auditorium. Right. I know. We all know exactly where that is. Mm -hmm. So you say 7 o'clock. Is it a Tuesday night? What are we talking about? I know it's early no, in the... No, it's a March 2nd. What is that, a Tuesday? <laughs> I, I think it's... A Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday I night. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you could bring a fairly good uh, turnout, and maybe that could hold that other date, March 22nd, a ways. I don't know what happens from there, but if we can start at least by getting people's awareness. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my thoughts is the editors of the newspapers. We don't have too many newspapers. They're still standing, and they're still publishing every day, and some of them weekly, but we have less. We have more things online. And I'm just wondering how you could get to some of these editors because they are familiar with the White Barn. Most of the people here, even people who are who are not theater people, most people know about the White Barn. Sure. They used to go there. Right. They Even if they haven't gone there, I mean, uh, the specialness of it and its history is important, but many people had gone. But it, because it hasn't uh, had performances in the last 15, 20 years, there's been a lot of people, new people to the to the county that really don't aren't aware of it. Well, have you done an appraisal? Has anybody done an appraisal? I know he bought the property in 2006, the developer, I read that in the New York Times for six million dollars or five million dollars. That's the price tag on. Yeah, it was four point eight. We did a land appraisal, and that came in at two point one. That's what I was going to tell you because I I live in Easton, which is another town north, and we've had some property big changes in the property values of large acreages that are being considered for sale. And I wanted to tell you that there's been a big change in. Un it's unfortunate for all of us who live here because our properties have devalued so much, and it's all part of the um, burst, the bubble that burst. And Waldo, how many acres is the property? Uh, right now, what we would get from it is uh, is about twelve acres, twelve mm -hmm. to fifteen acres. Mm -hmm. So, what is your plan? Well, that's the thing. We want to bring back the legacy that Mike Braidon uh, created, the fifty-year legacy. We want to make this an incubator uh, for the arts uh, and to bring young people, connect them with uh, older artistic mentors, and continue what she did there. 
which was to introduce new plays, new works of theater. Well, I, I have a, I want to tell you a story um, about an actor called Peter Falk. Peter Falk was a clerk in um, Hartford, um, and he heard about some masterclasses that were going on at the White Barn, run by a very famous classical actress called Eva Le Gallien. He attended these classes, um, uh, for actors. Uh, Eva Le Gallien was a, a considerable taskmaster and she didn't suffer fools. Peter Falk always was late for every single class. He never turned up on time. And eventually Eva had enough of this and she pulled him aside and said, young man, what do you think you're doing? Don't you know that the acting profession is one of the most rigorously disciplined professions in the world? And you are always late and you call yourself an actor. And Peter Falk turned to her and said, well, I'm very sorry. Even though I know these classes are for actors, I'm not an actor, I'm a clerk mm -hmm. in Hamden. And I have to travel through traffic every day to get to the classes. And it, sometimes I just can't get there in time. And I'm really sorry and I'm very upset that I've upset you. Eva took a breath and she said, Peter, you are an actor. And you're a very good actor. And you must give up being a clerk in Hampden. And you must become the actor that you are. And that's what he did. And we all know Peter Falk as yeah. that wonderful detective in, the, in that old raincoat. Right. Uh, uh, Palumbo. Um, now, this is the sort of thing that I'm, I know that uh, Waldo wants to return to about bringing on talent, young talent, um, I mean, everything has to start somewhere. And the White Barn was a place where things started. And Broadway was where they ended up. Do you know the Eugene O'Neill Center, basically, uh, mm. as Lucille shared with me, came and visited her theater. And actually, George White, who founded it, right. and, uh, used Lucille's theater as a basis for the Eugene O'Neill Center, which is, you know, continuing to this day. And in large, increasing in size, they just added uh, music, I think, yes, and they poetry did. or something. Exactly. So we know it can work. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the theater is such that the the grounds uh, can hold, uh, you know, there has been talk about doing screenwriting as well as playwriting and as an actor's uh, resource. Uh, it would be it could function in so many ways and be so exciting uh, and be a really important uh, resource for Fairfield County. So and for people visiting too, yes, you know, to go and see the history. That means you have to connect with the universities because the theater department's so well and healthy. You know, I, I'm part of the critics circle in Connecticut and visit the theater all the time, and I can just tell you that the audiences are fairly. The theaters are packed which I'm still having to figure out through this recession, why so many people are just packing the theaters. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see that the Yale Drama School, every university here has a theater department. Sacred Heart now has a four-year program. Mark came out of that program. Right, years but, ago. <laughs> but now it's a degree program, <laughs> right. four years at least, if mm -hmm. not. So that is what you're talking about, is putting a lot of mentoring and teaching there as well as professional theater happening. So I guess we're going to, you have to work awfully fast. You got to get those universities aware of what you want to do fast. And I'm sure yes. that there's about 20, I imagine, that I, theater. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Dolly. I think the universities, if you're out there, you university professors, you're listening to this, you know, work with us. Uh, look at what you can do. This uh, is a very important. Uh, stage in any young person's development uh, uh, in the theatre and there's nowhere to go once you've finished your courses at either at uh, BFA level or MA level uh, and then there's this big gap in, an, in, in the career before you uh, stand a chance and a lot of people give up and there's a lot of unsung talent out there that needs somewhere like the White Barn for, to develop if you like, look at it as a as a kitchen where young chefs are going to learn their trade, but they're also going to develop 
new recipes, new exciting ways of looking at making food delicious and different. Well, see, and I was thinking of a gymnasium, is. but a kitchen is just as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Theater Artist Workshop is only a mile away, yeah. and it represents about 300 professional actors. Right. So one email can go to 300 people. Oh, well, we have the organization way, way behind this. And they, they're March all, 2nd, yeah, they're Yeah, they're all supporting it. And we're going to do a social media outreach, which, uh, you know, to get the people to show up. I mean, in one March week 2nd. since the New York Times article, there's been three more. Mm-hmm. The Norwalk Hour. Right. And we had the Broadway World. Uh, that which was, was good. That was uh, got a lot of coverage and a lot of interest in it. Um, and there is uh, other uh, writers that have co- contacted me. I'm doing some of the PR and outreach uh, so that I think we'll get some more coverage. And there just was a museum show about a year ago that Marty LaMonica did about yep. the three theaters. Peter and I were both involved in, in that. that at so Fairfield Museum. It w- included Fairfield the, museum. the three theaters in Fairfield County, which was Westport, Shakespeare, and the White Barn. The only one still existing is Westport, and the other two are kind of uh, so they ghosts must of the have past. a fairly good mailing list too. That uh, yes, and I, that's some 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 place that we should go to of those people who attended that um, that uh, exhibit. So we need to uh, galvanize this pretty quickly. Yes, absolutely. And everybody in this room is already doing the lives of about three people at once. <laughs> well, Mark certainly is. I am. So um, are you familiar with, the, with these um, television stations here, Waldo? They, they'll bring those trucks. It doesn't take a whole lot to get those TV trucks from the stations. We have Channel 12, 8, and what is the other one, NBC? The three, NBC from three, up in the valley, yes, Channel 6, I think. Or, three. We yeah. have the one in Hartford. Right. I know when I did the Gustav Whitehead rally, all three, three TV stations came without a lot of... Mm-hmm. When they know it's important, they're there. Right. Need to have them there March second. We will. I will do Mark, everything though, we can to contact. It, it them. won't be too difficult, you know, mm-hmm. if uh, if it is the way I think. But you got to really move fast, and the money's got to be completely different than the money that he's looking at the mm-hmm. developer. So, Walter, you already know that, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean the outrage is just extremely important. I think if we can get enough coverage on this, you know, we can we can have some leverage. If you can just stop it down somehow, I don't know what the legalities are, but if you can slow it down, that would give you a little time uh, to try That's to work need, yeah. f- further. And uh, to 22nd of March is just, you know, is there compromise involved? Is he willing to talk? I mean, because if you have 15, 10 or 15, eight, I thought you said 12 acres, you had more and then two acres were sold off or something. So now you have... Is there a way that this can work out where he can still put up a... Are you going to go for all or none is what I'm saying? Are you going to, is there a way that the theater can be left alone and get going on putting together some money to bring the theater back, the roof, the interior, whatever? You, I mean, there's going to be costs there. And then let him build a few houses on... Would he consider that? That's an option that he's thrown out there. But then again, you know, he says uh, it takes about six months to go through that process to get that sort of approved. Um, That's all to your advantage. Just, that would be to your yeah. advantage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he would he would slow down his effort, though, um, you know, to allow us to do that. But he, he has been open. But, uh, you know, he's also changed, uh, changed the deadline for us to raise the funds throughout our, our, our process. So what about attorneys? I mean, they're very expensive. That's all I know. But uh, we well, have a theater great, attorney we've here. Great support. We've got great support from the, uh, the Nevis Law Firm. So we're working with them. Um, you know, and they'll, they'll support us through this effort. The Nevises had, are, are from Westport, but they had also been very close to Lucille uh, when, uh, when she see. was running the theater. So um, I think that Waldo has found a good law firm to he represent him. Right. Well, he needs it. But also Alan Nears, the theater yeah. attorney here that everybody knows so well. Mm-hmm. It's N-E-I-G-H-E-R. Yes. yes. Right. And so his father was his a writer father. <laughs> for <laughs> the... Bridgeport Herald, right? And his father did a lot of writing, and he also illustrated his writing. And his work's been on display at that same museum this year that we talked about, Mm -hmm. Fairfield Museum, that did the Bravo show that honored the White Barn Shakespeare Theater. Well, we will all do what? What is the website? Now, there's there's one Cranberry Association. 
right? That's one. And, group and they're of supporting people. this, but it's really um, Waldo. Your your website it's, is what? The website that people who are listening tonight want to go to is www.whitebarntheater.org, and that's R E. How do you spell theater, Waldo? R E. R E. R E. <laughs> and you can you can donate right through our website, and you can find out all the information by signing up. So if you go to the website, can they reach you? Because, you know, different writers might want to talk with you. And Absolutely. I don't want to put... The number is right on there. Okay, because I don't want to put you on the spot, but you really have to make yourself available for interviews or whatever. It can be really overwhelming when you're trying hard on a deadline, as long as you're aware of it. It's really a big question of raising the money. What's the condition of the buildings? What, the structure got... is good. Um, but he's doing uh, asbestos and abatement on the barn. And, you know, I saw a picture the other day where these sinks, I think the sinks in the dressing room were taken out. And, you know, it's it's hard to look at. But the the structure of the barn, I believe, is a steel structure. So that, that barn has been uh, holding up for a while now. Yeah. And a roof? Mark, what about the roof? Anybody? I think the roof is okay. I think it's, a, you know, there's got to be a lot of things to be looked at. But the body of the theater itself, where the seats are and um, where the stage is, is fine. I, know, I, I, I would love everybody to be able to see a picture of this place. It is mm-hmm. quite exquisite. It's very beautiful. It's set in a beautiful setting. And if we don't save this place, it's going to be replaced by... 12 ordinary houses. How boring is that? There's no, you know, we've got to save it. This is, this is a, a, about the future. It's about the, about the future of the theatre. It's about tomorrow's artists. And we need to find a home where they can be nourished and make new work. Gee, you make me feel, it's, feel terrible. I it's, just... really, it's really a magical space. When I went out there a year and a half ago, I just got complete chills by by seeing the barn, and you know it was a perfect uh, sunny day, and with the pond, it's it, it's a great uh, retreat for artists. It's on Newtown Turnpike, right. right? And you you went there as a child, of course, uh, Waldo, right? You were you were <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. right, uh, ringing the bell in intermission and and setting out the ham and Swiss cheese sandwiches <laughs> before the performances. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. I saw the pictures. I'd been there many times on Saturday nights over the years, and I just re- the pictures were in the New York Times article or Dan Woog's article, and they're on the website too, the mm-hmm. pictures, those yes. wonderful pictures that Peter took. Yep. Well, we'll do our share on this end um, to see if we can get more, even more publicity done in the next week. And I think that, Mark, you've got a real winner between Mark uh, Graham and Peter Ling. So um, we'll, we'll back you up and see if we can stop oh. some more devastation. Dolly, thank you so happen. much for doing this. You know, it's well, just, I'm you know, to... you know you're, you're, you're such an advocate and we really appreciate it. And we, we will do everything. Uh, I think that March 2nd date is going to be very important. And we're going to uh, try to get social media and get everybody out there to Norwalk, to the town hall at 7 o'clock uh, so that they can show their support. I think it'll make a big difference. Yes. I think if the political people in Norwalk... The mayor of Norwalk used to be the a police uh, chief. <laughs> I interviewed him, so I know he he's really concerned about his city, Harry Riling. So yes. I think have you talked? Have you talked to him, Waldo, to the uh, mayor?